the first use case, we're going to look at fatality rates in you know, industries within the United States. Um, and, and what we're going to try to do in this is we're going to try to understand what industries have higher fatality rates um, that you know, have uh, are more dangerous, and um, try to understand the underlying factors that cause certain industries to be more dangerous. And to accomplish this, we're going to use two platforms, um, two software products, which are kind of the main cogs in our platform. Um, we're going to use the data science experience, which is a new platform, and we're also going to use SPSS and Modeler, which has been around a long time. Um, and those are two of the main cogs. There's more, but those are two of the main cogs of our um, platform, so of the pl predictive analytics platform. All right, the data we're going to use comes from uh, free government sources, um, websites like getdata.gov, and we're going to define industries in terms of NAICS codes. Are you guys familiar with NAICS codes? All right, well, it's a classification system that was derived, uh, there was something before called SIC codes, you may have heard of that, um, but a NAICS code is, is basically a, is a hierarchy of classifying uh, businesses in the United States. It's a six-digit hierarchy, and each level you drill down, you get into a more specific industry. We're going to be using four and five-digit NAICS codes. Um, so, for example, like code 11 is agriculture, forestry, at a two-digit level is agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting. If you go into a three-digit level, like say 111, you make it into agriculture. If you go into uh, the four-digit level, you'll go into 1111, and that might be soybean farming. You go into another level, that might be soybean farming um, with, I don't know, with uh, fertilizer or organic or something like that. You know, but you get the idea. So each one of these industries kind of rolls down. By the time you get to the sixth level, you get to a very specific type of business. Any questions about that? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and switch over to SPSS Modeler then. All right, so this is SPSS Modeler. It's a graphical interface, and um, everything here is uh, coding. You can code within this platform or within this tool. Um, you don't have to. Most of the processes that you want to do, I'd say 99% of them, you can do with one of these uh, pre-built uh, function nodes. They're called nodes. Um, these first nodes right here on the left, we're actually reading data from the database. And the database we're reading from is a Dash DB database, so it's up in the cloud. So I'm connecting over the miracle of the internet to a Dash DB database. And when I do that, uh, we can bring that data into my environment here on my PC. So let's look at the data just to kind of get an idea of what we're dealing with. We'll preview this first table. And this is data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And it's just a bunch of information about uh, industry. So and this data is aggregated by a FIPS code, which is a county code, and by an industry code, which is a NAICS code. Um, so for this particular county and this particular NAICS code, uh, for example, this is how many employees they have, which is zero. Um, all of them are zero. But for, the, for this particular one, they're zero. And there's one establishment in that county. Um, here there's two establishments for this county and this FIPS code. So this is just data that, again, I got from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, brought it down, transformed it, and loaded it into Dash DB. This right here is uh, data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and this is fatalities. So this is the total number of fatalities that occurred in soybean farming in 2015 for this particular next code, for this which is soybean farming. This is data from the Census Bureau, and this is how much... This is from a survey, so based on the NAICS code, how much that particular industry spent on the raw materials and how much they spent on capital equipment. And this is a, another field, a table that I created, and I had to do some pretty heavy-duty um, ETL, similar to what um, Mike showed you earlier. But I knew that there would probably be a geographic component, so in order to incorporate that, uh, what I did is I, I calculated the all of the states that have a mortality rate that's um, greater than one in 20,000, about one and a half in 10,000. And um, then I calculated the percentage of businesses in each one of these NAICS codes that fall into those particular states. So for example, in this particular NAICS code, 8%, 8.2% of the businesses fall in a state with a high fatality rate. So it allows me to kind of capture that geographic element, um, even though my data is aggregated at an industry level. All right. so. You know, all this data is coming in, and this is a stream I built. And again, all of these were just different functions I brought in from my toolbar down here. And they all do a specific thing to my data. Um, for example, here I'm creating a new um, 
redefining a, f a field. Here I'm putting in a filter or a where statement. Here I'm aggregating. Um, but you can kind of get the idea. I won't run through all of these, but you can kind of get the idea that each one of these buttons does is something specific to my data. These merge uh, nodes actually bring the data together. So when I run it through this stream right here, um, and I create, and here I'm actually creating the fatality rate, which would be you know the total fatalities divided by the average number of employees times 10,000. So it's the number of fatalities per 10,000 employees. Bring all these together, and um, I get a result. Sort it. I get the fatality rate by industry. So this is sorted from the, the least dangerous um, industries to the most dangerous industries, which would be down here. The most dangerous industry, according to this 2015 data, would be rail transportation. And you can just kind of just kind of eyeballing this. It looks like there's a lot of transportation and a lot of agriculture. Logging kind of makes sense. Farming, corn, transportation, taxi service. So I don't know that I would have necessarily guessed it, you know, before looking at this, but it looks like kind of the most dangerous place to work or when you're driving around. I guess it makes sense in farming, dairy and cattle production. So, so that's kind of the industries. Now we're going to kind of drill in and do some analysis to try to understand why those are so dangerous. Does that make sense? Am I with everybody? Okay. All right, so you can imagine that I did all this. I'm connecting up a lot of different tables, doing a lot of functions. If I were to write this out, are you guys familiar with SQL code? All right, if I were going to write this out in SQL, um, it'd be a pretty hairy query. Um, in fact, by creating these buttons, the modeler behind the scenes generates optimized SQL code. So I can show you what the code looks like, and again, I can agree with my I agree with my original assumption that it's pretty hairy. I mean, that's a pretty hairy query. So I can copy this query, and um, I can port it to another application, any application that can read SQL. So I just did a Control C there, and um, I'm going to control V it here inside my notepad. All right, so and I'm going to go ahead and do something else here. I'm going to take out the quotes because where I'm going to put this doesn't like the quotes. So I'm just going to do a global replace there. All right, so I'm just going to park this for a minute. So up to this point, I've been showing you the GUI two tool, and like I said, I'm one of these guys that uses a GUI when it makes sense, uses coding when it makes sense. Um, in this case, using a GUI is kind of a no-brainer, really, because, you know, to write this out manually would have been a complete bear. Why do that when you can let the GUI build it for you? But the next part, I'm going to do a bunch of scatter plots. I'm going to do an exploratory data analysis, try to understand the relationship between my, my uh, independent variables and my dependent variables, for, which is failure rates, try to get an idea. And for me personally, it's easier to do that in code. And I think I'll show you in a minute, um, but I think... Once you see, I think it makes sense how it'd be easy, why doing it in a coding environment kind of makes sense. So I'm going to switch over to the data science experience. And this is our brand new platform. It's web-based. So I'm actually in Firefox right now. So I go to IBM datascience.com. Whoops. Sorry. Datascience.ibm.com. And I can sign in. And just real quick to kind of go over, remember I mentioned earlier how we're trying to create this social aspect of, of uh, data science. You know, how we're trying to bring people together that may not speak the same language, may not use the same terminology, may not use the same tools, but bring them all together so that they can you know, move their organization forward using data science in one platform. And data science experiences is our means to do that. Um, just, just really quick, just kind of feature kind of description here. At the very highest level, you have projects, and that sounds exactly what it sounds like. That, that is exactly what it sounds like. It's something where you're trying to solve a problem, build a model, uh, whatever. So I've got a project up here where I'm going to analyze industry mortality rates. So I'm going to click on that. Within each project, you have um, a few elements. One would be your analytics assets. Um, these would be things like notebooks, machine learning models, and um, Spark pipelines, if you're familiar with those terms. Um, also, in the near future, uh, it's a roadmap thing, but should happen by the end of the year, you will also have SPSS modeler streams as an asset inside of DSX. So everything we just did in modeler, um, you can do within DSX, within it'd be another type of assets. 
Also, when you're doing data science, you have data, obviously. Um, this is the Dash DB database that I'm connected to. Uh, and then beyond that, you have deployments, which is new. And I, I don't really understand all of this because it just came out. But this is, from what I understand, this is the ability to kind of give you control over your data and your environment in terms of access, more control security. It's like an extra security layer. And then the last element, which is pretty simple, but in a sense, it's also very revolutionary, I think, is it's a social aspect. So you, we're trying to incorporate almost a Facebook aspect or a Twitter aspect um, to data science. So again, there's, and it takes several forms. One would be these bookmarks, which, um, you know, this is pretty cool because if you're working, if you're like me, um, when I do something, I, a lot of times I do research on how to do it, right? And, um, uh, and, and so, like a year later, I come back and I'm like, what did I do? Well, a lot of times that research is, I did it somewhere else. So I have to go relearn it. But with, with data science experience, you can actually bookmark research and put it inside of your project. So, like here, regression, I can say how to perform a regression, uh, logistic regression R. So, I can bookmark that, save it, and um, add it. So, it's actually permanently stored in the notebook until I delete it. So the next person that comes along that wants to continue my project, they can see exactly what I looked at. Also, you can add collaborators. Um, you know, so if I want to add people, you know, to work with me, I can. If they have a Bluemix account, they should show up here, um, and I can go in and uh, actually, you know, make them a viewer, admin, or editor. So, and then there's also other things, um, but you know, and I'll try to point those out in a minute. But you know, things that you can actually go in chat functions, things like that notes that you can leave within the project so that, you know, whether you've got a guy sitting next to you, you just don't talk to, <laughs> or a guy in Bangladesh, I mean, you know, you can literally work together and collaborate. That's that's the whole idea. That's what we're trying to do is create a cooperative environment. All right, so any questions about that? Um, I just kind of touched on it. I, I, in the interest of time, uh, maybe we can do a follow-up. We can do a lot more of these features because there's, there's tons of them. All right, so let's dig into this. And this is an R notebook. Are you guys familiar with Jupyter Notebooks? Well, a notebook is just a way for you to interact with your data. So you type a command in a notebook to sort your data and execute it in your data source. You type a command in your notebook to run a model um, or create a plot. You execute it and it runs a plot. So, um, <clears throat> So in these first few cells, I'm just connecting to my database, you know, and I'm establishing my R libraries. Um, so I'll just go ahead and run these real quick. And then here, I'm actually going to query the database. So I need SQL here in order to execute this command. I need to put SQL in each of these quotes. Luckily, I have my SQL right here. Premier. So I took the non-coding tool to, uh, or I took the coding tool to develop this complex SQL, pasted that over here, and brought and used it to bring in data into my coding tool. So I have two tables, even though they're not on the same platform right now, they will be very, or the same product right now. They're the same platform, not the same product. Small distinction, um, but they will, and they will be very soon. But even right now, even when they're ones in web, ones on, on my desktop, I can still link them to and use the two uh, tools together. Um, okay, so this is this is code, and this looks ugly. I admit it's not. There's nothing pretty about this. But if you notice that the only thing different in each one of these is the variable on my y-axis. So here, so to create this, I wrote it one time, and it was really just control place change the name, control paste change the name, control paste change the name, control paste change the name. So you can see that it was really it looks kind of bearish, but if you can get over that, it really wasn't that hard. And for me personally. Um, that was a lot easier for me to do than to, you know, do a bunch of a bunch of pull down menus. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and run all of this, and I'll and I've got a bunch of scatter plots, and these scatter plots show me the relationship between the fatality rate and each one of my individual variables. So very quickly by just Creating one line, a couple lines of codes, control paste, change the name, control paste, change the name, control paste, change the name. I can go in and, and see very clearly the relationship between my, my X's and my Y. 
And uh, just to uh, kind of give you an idea, some of the insights you can gain by doing this, um, you can see that there's definitely a downward sloping relationship between pay and the fatality rate. So industries that pay less than $40,000 a year are a lot more dangerous than ones that pay more than $40,000 a year. Um, this right here, uh, industries with more businesses typically have a much lower fatality rate than industries with fewer businesses. Industries with more employees typically have um, a, a much higher, a much lower fatality rate than, than industries with more, with less employees. Industries that are growing where the employment level changes have a lower fatality rate than those that are shrinking, if we're staying the same. Again, um, industries that are growing have a lower fatality rate than ones that are shrinking or staying the same. Industries with growing wages have a lower fatality rate than ones with shrinking or stagnating wages. Um, again, lower wages means, lower wage growth means um, higher fatality. This is the cost of materials. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much going on there. It looks pretty flat as well. This is the capital expenditures. And here's that state variable. I'm not sure what to make of this, but you can see that obviously people that work in um, low and high states with, with more um, fatalities are more likely um, are more likely to, industries with more employees in high fatality states are more likely to, to have a higher fatality rate which makes sense so uh, states that have high fatality rates um, typically will impact an industry the more an industry is concentrated in high uh, fatality rate states the more fatalities it has Industries with growing wages are safer. Industries with higher wages are safer. And smaller industries, in terms of both the number of firms and employees, are, are much more dangerous than larger um, industries. So just very quickly, by doing some code, we're able to get some insight into what our data fundamentally looks like and what's driving that fatality rate. Any questions? Um, the last thing I did right here is um, and this is just R code. I took the data that I combined with the SQL into one table, and I wrote it back into the database. So now I have a new table called Fatality Combined, which is just the assimilation of all those of that SQL query. And I'll use that over here back in model. All right, so uh, <clears throat> this, uh, this model that I built is, again, from more of a persona of somebody that's more advanced with more st formal statistical training. So I built this model by hand. I handcrafted this model. Based on the insights I gained from that exploratory analysis, I built this model right here. And uh, it's just a linear regression model. And there's just uh, one, two, three, four variables in it. The first one is a, the annual average employment. It's one divided by the squared value of the annual average employment level. So the number of employees in the industry squared divided into one. This is whether or not the, this is a one zero variable, whether or not the industry was uh, farming or transportation related. Um, this is that state variable. It's the log transformation of that state variable. You know, how many, uh, what percentage of businesses in the state are, um, what percentage of businesses in the state are high fatality businesses and high fatality industries? And then this is just a variant of this one. It's whether or not the average employee, if, they, if the industry has more than 25,000 employees. And here's my, again, here's my regression model. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of ways to evaluate that. The R square here is 0.9. So I did all this. I did this within a regression node. And let me show you that real quick. But the regression node is real simple. It's all point and click. Tell it what you want to predict, and you pull in your variables that you want to use. And you know, one way to evaluate a model is with R squared. Another way is to apply it to a different data set. So this is this this string looks very similar to this one up here, with one exception. Inside my query, um, in here, I have I made one little change. I'm pointing to a different table here. So instead of pointing to 2015, I'm pointing to 2016. 
So we're going to take the model that we built from 2015 and we're going to apply it to 2016. And that's really easy to do. All I have to do is take this golden nugget right here, copy the node, go to edit, paste the node, drag it into my 2015 stream, connect it up. Whoops. So I'm just taking the model that I built for 2015, applying it to 2016 data, and we'll estimate the R squared, find out how well it fits 2013 data, um, about 93.93, so it's actually better. The model that we built in 2015 actually works better in 2016. All right, so I covered a lot of ground here, um, but just to kind of summarize, I started out with um, pulling a bunch of different tables into uh, in a modeler, um, using these buttons uh, and lines, connecting them up to create uh, some, uh, a monster SQL code. We took that SQL code, ported it over to the data science experience, used that same Harry query to pull in data from the same sources, did some exploratory analysis, exploiting the ability of the, the functionality of SQL, uh, excuse me, of open source tools, uh, R in this case. Um, and just by the way, we could have done all those uh, scatter plots here in Modeler as well. Um, I don't think I mentioned this, but I, I just, it's just my preference. I mean, I like to go back and forth um, and use code when it makes sense for me personally to use code. It may not make sense to you, but it did to me. Um, then we built a model based on the insights we gained from that exploratory data analysis, and then we took that model and we applied it to a different year just to validate how well it worked. 